Hello, welcome, and a very excellent evening tonight. I have got something, something big. This is a Commodore 1541 floppy drive. This was what a floppy drive for the C64 looked like back in 1983. It's massive, it's heavy. The actual drive mechanism is pretty standard and not that big, but there's a huge, huge transformer inside and a lot of computer technology, actually. But this thing doesn't run. Um, the LEDs stay on and it doesn't reset. So we will open it up, we will clean it a bit, and we will make it work. Because I think these are absolutely fascinating. I have the 1541.2, which is the smaller version and the more modern one, which is also nice, but I think this one is very iconic and it's worth preserving. So. Let's get over to the desk, open it up, and see what's wrong with it. So this is the inside of the Commodore 1541. Let's have a quick tour around that. On the top you see the main PCB for the whole... Well, this is the basic of the computer part, and it's actually, well, very similar to a C64. We have the 6502 MOS CPU, two 6522 VIA versatile interface adapter chips. We have uh, this one over here that I would have to look up. Not sure what it does, probably control the drive. I don't know. Um, then we have the DOS ROM, which I already swapped out because the other one seemed to be bad. Um, and another ROM with, I don't know what it contains. This is probably the uh, static RAM, I guess. And there's a bunch of logic chips. I think this is a hex inverter. Um, and this is a, the XOR chip for the uh, power-up reset circuitry, which uh, gets triggered. Two big capacitors, two voltage regulators, and a clock uh, or oscillator, and all kinds of smaller things. This over here is the actual drive, and we will clean it because there's a little bit of grime and dust here. Um, carefully clean it off. The read he right head is down there. You also need to clean that. I already um, unscrewed the whole chassis, so we can take this thing carefully out. And we need to do some cleaning of the case and other things. Down here there's some nasty grime. Looks a bit like, I don't know, something went in there. And But the whole thing looks pretty, pretty darn okay so far. We also have the main transformer over here, which makes the whole thing pretty heavy. This is the stepper motor for the read right hat. This is the flywheel for the drive and it has this nice strobe pattern on there so you can adjust the speed of the disk drive for 50 or 60 hertz systems uh, with the adjustable resistor here in this hole. And we have the spindle motor here which gets driven by this this belt that runs around here, uh, which is sometimes needs to be replaced. I think we might still be good. The whole thing moves a little bit sticky and the whole drive makes noise. I'm not sure how to fix that yet, um, but we might just take it apart bit by bit and clean it in the process. So let's put this aside and uh, start scrubbing away.
The problem with the drive was that it wasn't really turning on. The lights just kept on lighting and uh, that's it. So what I did was to try out my brand new Rigel scope, which is an oscilloscope where you can check logic levels and stuff and waveforms on electronic devices. So I opened up the 1541 and inside there is the main PCB. And I also took the service manual that you can download and there are a lot of nice interesting tricks. So first of all I checked the clock signal for the 6502 CPU which was fine so there was something in there and I also replaced both the CPU and the floppy ROM. The latter was suggested as a likely culprit for this kind of error. The CPU as well so I ordered one off of eBay which when it arrived looked a bit suspicious with the weird date code and the top also looked sanded off and relabeled. But well I replaced both of them anyway. Next up I tried to debug the reset circuit, both the UD3 IC and the CPU. However the reset signal didn't look quite right, it wasn't going high and low as I would expect it to be. So back to the CPU I went and I thought oh well, this looks like a fake CPU, so let's just replace it with the original one. Maybe the original one wasn't bad and it was only the ROM. So back to the original CPU, the 6502 from February 1985 we go. And I had to pry out the fake CPU using a little tool from my soldering kit. And after that I replaced it with the original MOS CPU. Always be careful when doing that not to bend any pins and make sure that you have grounded yourself to get rid of any static charges that your body might still have. However, this did not fully succeed and I had another idea. The reset pin looked very weird, a little bit floating as you may say. So I actually attached a proper serial cable to the serial port of the drive. Then I reattached my probe to the pin for the reset circuit and attached the serial cable to my PC. And when turning on, suddenly I got signals on the data lines and on the reset signal and everything was good. So the CPU wasn't defective after all, but the reset circuit couldn't work because I didn't attach a floppy cable. So that's one of the problems that you can have actually. And I'm pretty sure I tested with a cable attached in the beginning, but uh, forgot to do that when I swapped out the floppy ROM. So after that I tried to format a floppy disk and lo and behold that was no problem at all. Suddenly the drive was totally back in working order, which is actually very nice. The rotations of the floppy disk can be actually calibrated by use of the pattern on the bottom of the drive. Shining a 50 or 60 Hz strobe light on that should show a static pattern. If it's not static you can use the potentiometer which is in the black hole to the upper left to speed up or slow down the drive. You can alternatively use a diagnostic program that measures the speed of the floppy while in use in the C64, which I did and it showed that the drive is mostly at the 300 RPM, maybe a little bit low at 298, but it was good enough to read and write disks and I could also read them in my other 1541-2 drives. But I still wanted to know what was up with this fake SX502 chip, so I complained with the seller on eBay and he sent me another copy of this thing, which looked equally fake. But this time I thought, okay, I have a PET computer which uses the exact same CPU. So I put that in, but before I want to show you what a good CPU in the PET looks like, by just calling up a drive listing. And as you can see, everything looks fine. The drive listing scrolls through. Sorry for the shaky video here, but I had it holding in my hand. And now using the fake CPU, we get a lot of snow on the screen. I'm not sure what causes this, but it's definitely not okay. So while being a 6502 CPU after all, it's definitely in some way broken. One last fix that I have to do is to get rid of a bit of noise in the drive. It makes some clanking and rattling sounds coming from the motor spindle it seems. Or not quite the motor spindle but this top thingy here that holds down the floppy disk. 
Other than that, I must say the 1541 is a very beautiful and unique drive. And I am very happy that it's now back in working condition. And it definitely fits best with the original brown bread bin C64, which it was the original drive it came with. So I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a like and definitely a comment. Did you have one of these drives back in the day? But that's it for today, so see you hopefully in the next video and make sure to check out my Patreon account if you want to support me to get more of this stuff. Either way, I wish you a very good evening and until next time.